Hello everybody, I'm Jeremy Korsniewski from Autoblog. We are sitting in a 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander, all new for the 2022 model year. And uh, basically, besides the name, unrelated to the previous version, um, this one is built on uh, a new platform that was co-developed with uh, Nissan. Um, uses a similar powertrain and uh, chassis um, to the Nissan Rogue. Uh, but it uh, was co-developed, not a hand-me-down platform, uh, as Mitsubishi says. Um, so the, it's uh, very much a Mitsubishi, um, not just a rebodied or, or restyled Rogue. Um, definitely a, a unique vehicle. Uh, for the first time, uh, Mitsubishi has a digital gauge cluster um, available in the uh, Outlander. Um, we're sitting in a, a top-level model, of course, so uh, not every... Uh, vehicle will be equipped this way, but wanted to show you um, some of uh, uh, the features that uh, you can expect in this vehicle. Um, we have the standard cluster in right now. Um, using these uh, steering wheel buttons, um, we can uh, change some various things on the uh, uh, screen, um, different views, uh, see what's going on with um, the cameras and uh, sensors, see how close you are to things. Um, obviously, there's a tachometer on the left. Give it a little rev. It's tachometer on the left. Um, and a speedometer on the right. We're currently in normal drive mode, uh, but we've got this uh, uh, handy selector here. Um, so, uh, you know, as we move through the settings, um, you'll see it shows uh, various options. That changes how the uh, all-wheel drive system uh, reacts, the transmission and the throttle tuning. Um, so uh, tarmac is what they consider uh, their sport mode. Um, most people are going to leave it in normal pretty much all the time. Um, so, uh, pretty neat uh, graphics. Um, there's also a button down here. Um, if you're familiar with the internet, you've probably seen these uh, three dots before, or excuse me, three lines. That uh, is what you use to um, change uh, what you're looking at. Um, and you can see you can put a lot of different uh, um, bits in that uh, 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 tachometer screen. Um, navigation is an interesting one. Uh, by default, it'll show you the compass, but if you're uh, if you're running on a route, um, it will uh, give you um, information for your uh, directions there as well. Um, there are actually uh, a couple different um, designs. Uh, you can change the view here, um, get more information uh, in the center, enlarge that area. Um, and uh, you'll see it changes the uh, gauge design to something very unique with kind of rotary style um, uh, gauge cluster. So pretty interesting. Um, the infotainment system also um, new for this uh, vehicle. It is unrelated to Mitsubishi's previous infotainment systems and uh, they tell us um, this will be their, uh, their way going forward. Um, we've been using Android Auto um, and uh, uh, enjoy that, um, that implementation as well. Um, it is a touchscreen system. Um, no, we don't want to save the location, but you know you can see uh, basically um, you know it's it's quick. It works well. Um, there isn't any uh, lag in um, in the system. Things uh, respond quickly. It uses similar programming to Nissan's uh, system. So if you're used to the model or excuse me the menu hierarchy in Nissan's, um, this will make sense to you as well. Um, fortunately, there are real buttons. Not everything has to be uh, touchscreen um, knobs um, for tuning, for uh, um, for volume, and uh, there are uh, climate control um, buttons and knobs as well. Um, really, it's a it's a thoughtfully uh, laid out interior. Everything is uh, easy enough to reach, and uh, all new. Uh, for 2022. Uh, so expect to see something similar in, in future Mitsubishi products as well. All right, everybody, thank you for watching.